love this. So cool. We'll talk about that in a minute. Here we go. We're gonna talk on this here, but you gotta hear this for a second. What is doing that cool bass line? Listen to it. My friends, let me introduce you to Spire. Sorry, I couldn't help it. Um, hi, my name is John Skippy Limkul. Welcome to a new action-packed video. Lots to talk to you about. Um, <clears throat> we're going to cover Omnisphere and the Orb and fun ways of programming with the Orb and what the Orb means. Think of it as a really fun programmable envelope or LFO that you get to design by dragging a mouse around or using your finger in, an, in a in a touchpad situation on an iOS device. Uh, it's, it's very cool. Um, but I also want to show you this. This is coming out next week. Um, I've got a video that I'm going to be releasing in a couple days that's a review of Spire. For those of you that don't know Spire, this is Reveal Sound Spire. And it is a monster of a synthesizer. Um, in a nutshell, what makes it a monster of a synthesizer? Well, it has four oscillators. It has a wavetable form of synthesis as well as four other types of synthesis, including FM. It has up to nine voices of unison with separate detune density and stereo width of the unison. Hello. Here's your separate volumes. It's got two filters that can be used in really cool ways. It's got a whole bunch of different effects. Um, they're preset in the order that they are, but the reverb and the delay in particular are extremely good. It has four envelopes, one, two, three, four. It's got four LFOs. It's got step sequencers. It's got an arpeggiator over here, right there. And then it has a matrix page, which um, if most libraries that you buy for Spire, if, you, if you've bought Spire and you've bought libraries in the past, most of them have maybe one thing assigned right here, and that's it. This is deep programming. We went crazy. Casey made these patches, Casey Baldwin, Exosun. And uh, the latest versions of Spire 1.1 introduced four real-time controllers as well as the mod wheel. And we programmed the daylights out of all five controllers. So this sound you're hearing, that's because these are in... I turn off automation. So here it is, just the bass part by itself with the modulation wheel down. You know, but because of all the real time controllers that we have, that's going on, and then turn on the automation that I programmed into it. Now the reverb, the delay, these other parameters. Also, for the entire library, there's 128 plus patches. There's 128 patches here, and then there's a bonus bank with five more patches because we couldn't get them all to fit. Every one of these are programmed just like everything else. I standardize them. It's, it's important that we standardize. So in every patch, this is doing mainly oscillator changing harmonics. This is mainly envelopes. This is uh, Number three is always delay. Number four is always reverb on every patch. So you can turn off your automation and stuff. And when you call up each patch, okay. so this is reverb to 100% delays. Anyway, we'll cover all this in more detail. This is for the library we're releasing called Future X, Future Expansion. We're taking Spire somewhere deeper than it's gone before, I think, in most of the most of the libraries I've seen haven't gone to where we're going. So it's not an EDM. There's EDM patches, yes. And there's all sorts of big in, in your face cool sounds, but 
it's just also just wonderful synthesis. And we, we have patches, we have pads, we'll, we'll go through the whole details. On my Facebook Plugin Guru page, there's a coupon code you can put in to save 15% off Spire if you don't own it. And uh, that gets it under, I believe, $160 in the month of March of 2016. After that, it's, I think, $189, which is still a bargain for what it provides. It's a really cool synthesizer. So we're going to cover that more in the coming week and beyond. But we're going to be looking now at Omnisphere. And there's a couple things in Omnisphere we need to cover. I want to talk to you about the orb to do all the... How to do your own. So the orb is this page right here that says orb. A lot of you guys might not have noticed it, but it's, it's something that's a little confusing and wasn't used in factory voicing. And so the... Um, this library, Northern Exposure, is one of the first to actually use the orb that I know of in the, in the programming of it, so. Okay, so we're gonna take a look at how to sequence this stuff. We're gonna look at the dice, how you can use this and what that means. That's all coming up in just a second. But first of all, I wanna cover real quickly Version 2.2 of Omnisphere 2 just came out. And it's an important update. For those of you that are using OMG drums, we're working very hard right now on volume two of OMG drums. So that's coming. Uh, let's go over here and let's call up a really fun multi. Okay. So a couple of things that happened um, in this update. First of all, the really cool, obvious thing that they did is uh, Spectrosonics made it so there's now ability to drag from this side or from this side to change the order of the effects. So if you wanted to experiment with what happened if you have the EQ here, if you have a reverb that you decided to add, and then you go, oh shoot, I wish it was earlier. It used to be you'd have to like copy well, this would have to go away, and then you copy, paste, copy, paste into the different slots. Now you just got to click and drag and put it where you want it, and now it can change the order. So that is really nice. There's also a global mute on patch level of the effects. So say um, this is seven. If I go to the effects and just click right here, it goes red, and that means no effects. Bypasses everything. The master effects and the two layers of A and B. See, they're grayed out. That means they are not working until you hit this again. And So those are the two obvious things in 2.2. Another one that's not so obvious that was a request. Um, I'm a beta tester with Spectrosonics and have been since <laughs> well, well, well before Omnisphere. Before Atmosphere, um, I used to work with Eric on sample libraries and all sorts of stuff. I've been around a while. Um, I put a request into the beta channel to the developers and to Eric and said, when you're using OMG drums and the, the sequencers, the, the arpeggiators all start and you want to stop it, you play a note. But if you're using a sequencer and you went, and then you wanted to stop, used to be before this update, when I hit stop, my sequencer didn't stop. Now let me go over here and quantize this part so that it comes out playing a little bit better. Okay. Anytime I stop now, latch stops. That did not happen in version 2.1 of Omnisphere. So if you use OMG drums, which I highly recommend because it's very addicting and very fun. Anytime you stop now, they stop. So it's now it's, it's truly working like Stylus RMX or any other sequence rhythm player kind of a system. The other thing that was improved slightly, I found, is that if you go, to, I'm going to change patterns really quick. See how this one here, these parts. These are set to uh, trigger mode. And so if you had, um, let's see, delete this sequence part. If I was to have... 
If I wanted to sequence this it, I had a hard time sometimes getting sync to be tight, but now... That, that, that trigger mode is now totally locked to the clock of your sequencer. So it's very easy to take that. Now, if I wanted to, I could quantize, but let's give it some swing and slow it down because it's not 155. There we go. <laughs> anyway, you get the idea. It starts and stops. It triggers much better. So OMG drums. It was really nice of the guys at, at Spectrosonics to tighten things up and make it so it works more compatibly with this type of library. Um, because there is a version 2 of this coming out in a two months or so. Got a lot of work to do. My goodness. But uh, what I want to talk to you about now is Northern Lights. So, and um, let's go initialize this multi. Um, all right. So if you go do through the list of Northern Lights, you'll see the orb in the name of the patches. And you'll notice when you call those up that the orb light is on. And when you play them, the orb is dancing around. And if you have the Omni TR application, you can see it here too. So the orb is a real-time controller. It has an X up and down and a Y axis, basically. And it doesn't work necessarily that way all the time, as we'll look at when we use it as a modulation source. You, at that point, if we say clear, it's just mainly in this point for the X to be the full range, and you just work in that area. Um, it works so it's it's not solidly clear how it works to me. It's a little mystery sometimes, but that's kind of the fun of the orb is it's this, you're in the orb, right? But basically, when you hit dice, it's randomly shuffling what it's going to change in the sound. And if you go to the effects page, to the A and B layer, see how this is the phaser and this is the easy verb? If you go back to orb and I click this again, now it's doing valve distortion on both which would actually sound pretty cool. So let's use that. And it randomly calls up different presets. Right? Ooh, I like that. Let's use that for our example. Okay. Now, the cool thing is, is that you can turn on inertia and that lets you, so that you just push it in a direction and... Now it's changing and following that orbit. And the speed of it depends on how fast you move your mouse. If you're going really slow, right? But it's not really tempo locked at this point. It's just inertia doing it. But if you turn inertia off, reset, set song position to legato, and let's say one bar. Once you've turned off these, we're going to use this recording section over here and actually record in our motion here. And you can do it a couple different ways. Um, if, you, if you want to use your sequencer, you can, right? To give you the click. But to do that, make sure you set this to one bar and to legato, which means that it won't start recording until you play a note. So that way you can, that's how you're going to tell it where beat one is. So we hit clear, we're at one bar, record, so it's flashing. There it is. And again, go over to the dice. Just roll the dice over and over again. Cool. It's cool. 
basically what it's doing is it's recording this motion in as an envelope or an LFO. So that will cycle and do what you want. Now, if you want to set it to be two bars, you could do that. So now you're again, hit clear, make sure you're on legato, not song position and hit record. Now, after you've recorded it in, changes to song position, because now it listens to your sequencer. And it doesn't care when you play notes. Okay. So experiment with it. If you want this to be fast, I kind of like the fast idea because it's different. So you can hit record. Make sure in the got legato. Go over here, set it to song position. So it doesn't matter when you play notes, now it won't restart. Got the idea? Okay. So we covered 2.2 update. The orb is a fun place. Oh, one more thing on the orb. Let's say initialize the patch. And let's go over here, turn on the filter, turn off the envelope, and modulate this with the orb 100%. So go over here to the orb, turn it on. This part confuses me a little bit, and I'm not clear on it. it. It might not be working right, but in this direction, it seems to go 100%. Here it's not 100%. Here it's not 100%. And here it doesn't do anything. So there's three axes working. I just used here just to be clear and smart and not get too confused. <laughs> it's easy to be confused. Hit clear, legato, record. Now you can now custom tailor it. just to do a little bit if I want I could go down here let's use this and modulate this with the orb you could even do things like go to the uh, insert effect let's have this be a reverb that's got a lot of reverb 100% long time and then go over to the here and modulate the send to that with the orb And that all is coming from Orb. So it's cool. It's fun to play with. So explore that. This is a way to use it as both a controller or as just a random roll of the dice. And you could do both. You could have it using it as a controller source and hit the dice too. And it'll just add additional things to change on top of the things you were doing in the synthesizer part. So now you can do synthesizer parts and effect parts with the orb. Here's your depth. All right, so that gives you some ideas to play with. Um, next up, we're gonna take the review of Spire to give you all the in-depth details of that synth, and then we'll do the walkthrough of the library. All right, so lots of stuff coming up. Thank you for watching this. Hope this helped you get into a new part of Omnisphere that uh, the Northern Lights Library is very happy to explore and introduce you to because we have not introduced this particular part of um, the Omnisphere to you. The orb wasn't used before, per se. Not in any patches I saved. So here we have it saved. Play with it, have fun. 
and we'll see you in the next video. Thanks. Good night. Bye.